Welcome to Kansas Ag Report with your host, Brian Hallman. Welcome to Kansas Ag Report. I'm Brian Hallman, and here's our lineup for today's show. In Ag News, we'll take a look at local and national headlines affecting Kansas farmers. In our Ag feature, we sit down with Terry Holdren from Kansas Farm Bureau to talk about the K-State Ag Tour. And inside Kansas Ag, Kansas Soybean talks to us about treated seed in the U.S. grain supply. And Farm Bureau talks to us about wheat marketing decisions. And in news you need to know, we get our weekly update from the Kansas Livestock Association, look back at last week's market activity with the guys from Paragon, and we'll let you know about important events coming up around the state of Kansas. Glad you could join us. Closed captioning brought to you by The Soybean Checkoff. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. KansasSoybeans.org. Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farmers and ranchers since 1919. KFB.org. Kansas Weed Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at KSWheat.com. Kansas Livestock Association, supporting our members' business interests to meet consumers' demands. KLA.org. Here's our national headlines for this week in Ag News. The U.S. Supreme Court has denied a petition against the California egg law that requires more stringent conditions for eggs from egg-laying hens in all 50 states. Missouri's Attorney General's office had led a multi-state fight against the law, saying it was unconstitutional and puts an unnecessary burden on egg producers in other states. The Supreme Court's action makes the Ninth Circuit decision stand. U.S. beef is headed to China for the first time in more than 13 years. The first shipment of beef under the new agreement between the U.S. and China left Greater Omaha Packing Company on Wednesday. Plant President Henry Davis says they had been preparing for the reopening of the Chinese market for some time. The first load shipped to China was an airship container of boxed beef consisting of steaks. Several agricultural groups are opposed to President Trump's decision to reinstate the ban on travel and U.S. business transactions with Cuba. Arkansas Congressman Rick Crawford says the president's policy is a missed opportunity for rural America, which would benefit from increased access to a $2 billion agricultural import market less than 90 miles from the U.S. shores. The president says he won't lift sanctions on the Cuban regime until all political prisoners are freed. In the local news, the Kansas Department of Agriculture is pleased to celebrate our hardworking dairy farms during the month of June as Governor Sam Brownback has proclaimed it Kansas Dairy Month. Kansas dairy farms are an important part of the economic growth of the agricultural industry, said Jackie McClaskey, Kansas Secretary of Agriculture. In 2016, the value of milk produced in Kansas was $530 million. There are 290 family-run dairy farms with more than 152,000 dairy cows in Kansas. Mexico is increasing the maximum amount of ethanol that can be blended in Mexican gas supplies from 5.8% to 10%. Tom Slight, president and CEO of the U.S. Grains Council, says the policy change is not a mandate and it does not yet apply to Mexico's three largest cities, but he's hopeful it will in the future. Mexico is a 12 billion gallon fuel market. The Mexican Institute of Petroleum is currently studying the merits of E10 to determine if its use should be expanded to all regions of the country. Here's the state's current crop conditions. Winter wheat condition rated 46% good to excellent. Winter wheat coloring was at 96%, near 97% last year. Harvested was 22% was equal to last year and near the 25% average. Corn conditions rated 61% good to excellent. Corn emerged was 95% near 99% last year. Soybean condition rated 67% good to excellent. Soybeans planted was now 90% near 80% last year. Sorghum condition rated 74% good to excellent. Sorghum planted was 77% behind 82% last year. Up next in our Ag Feature, we sit down with Terry Holdren from Kansas Farm Bureau to talk about the K-State Ag Tour. You're watching Kansas Ag Report. Please stay tuned. This segment brought to you by Kansas Livestock Association, supporting our members' business interests to meet consumers' demands. KLA.org. 
Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil-specific seed. Find them on the web at oldieseed.com. That's O-H-L-D-E seed.com. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. Kansas Weed Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Imagine having someone help you pick the best corn hybrids for every field on your farm. Your Oldie representative can combine your data with his data to offer a field-by-field prescription. Contact Oldie Seed today at 877-692-4555. This Medford, New Jersey school bus runs on biodiesel, and so do these. In fact, all of these buses run on clean-burning biodiesel, which is great because the more we use biodiesel in our heavy-duty vehicles, the less carbon pollution in our air. Think how great it would be if more of our school buses ran on biodiesel. More biodiesel, less carbon pollution. More is less. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. The producer-funded Kansas Wheat Innovation Center was built to get improved varieties into the hands of farmers faster. Kansas Wheat, farmers advancing their future through wheat genetics research. Thanks for staying with us this morning. We're in Manhattan at the Farm Bureau office. We're joined by Terry Holden, who's the CEO and general counsel. Did I get that right? Yeah. Because that is a mouthful. It is. Okay. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning, Terry. Um, what a great summer for you already. Yeah. Uh, you got to go out and spend some time with some Kansas State uh, students and got to travel rural Kansas. We did. We've seen great wheat harvest as well, so it's been right. good so far, yeah. Um, being out in rural Kansas, there's a lot of needs that rural Kansas has, especially when it comes to agriculture. Uh, what are some, some of the things you saw? So one of the things, you know, we try to do is take uh, leaders, decision makers, um, whenever we can, out to see rural Kansas agriculture, just to understand the needs. Um, spent a couple of days with folks from K-State, uh, the president and, and the deans of the College of Ag and, and the vet school, um, looking at mostly things that they would then see back on campus, right? So we toured some feedlots, talked to some uh, livestock producers, swine, um, beef cattle producers, um, and just got a sense of what they were facing from a labor perspective, um, from some of the needs they have just in terms of staffing, um, vet shortages that are going on. We've talked a long time about the need for large animal vets. Um, so those kinds of things, um, but also then seeing um, dairy production as well, um, talking about um, water infrastructure and, and the, the, you know, the governor's vision for the future of water in Kansas and what that means for production agriculture in terms of consumption and um, conservation and some of those kinds of things. It was a great couple of days. Um, I think we saw a lot and covered a lot of space, hopefully giving them a better sense of what they can do from the university perspective to better equip students um, who then go back out and, and enter the workforce across the state. Well, let's talk about one of those. Uh, let's talk about labor. Uh, we know the new administration is making a push to build a wall and they are deporting a lot of people. And yeah. what um, it, it doesn't matter what administration, you're a Republican or Democrat, it really doesn't matter. What matters is, is getting food to the store, to the table, and having a labor shortage is difficult for a lot of producers. Absolutely, and you know, labor is one of those things where, you know, whether you're talking about immigrant labor or or migrant labor, however you want to phrase that, um, you know, or folks who, who live in and have been in the area for years and decades, we've got to have a sustainable supply of, of workforce there to write pens, mm -hmm. uh, do all of the, the manual labor that occurs in, in animal agriculture or in just in the industry in general, um, you know, when we, go up the chain just a little bit, then you get into some of the processing aspects of things, whether it's a, the dairy plant that's going on in a Garden City beef or any of the other. Beef production, whatever it yeah, might be. Beef production, whatever. There's, there's got to be a workforce there. Um, and what we have seen over and over is just a lack of sustainable ability. Um, the Trump administration, I think they're getting better, but, but you know, came out talking about the wall, mm -hmm. talking about some really restrictive things that more than anything else cause folks to be afraid. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that doesn't work. Um, in that system. So helping folks understand what's the structure, how do I you know, maintain legal status if that's the case, or how do I you know, enter that workforce um, is important to us and important to the industry. Perfect, we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna talk about shortage of large animal vets and maybe some of the other things that are facing rural Kansans yeah. in agriculture. You're watching Kansas Ag Report. We'll see you in just a minute. This segment brought to you by Farm Bureau a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farmers and ranchers since 1919. KFB.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil-specific seed, 
Find them on the web at oldeseed.com. That's O-H-L-D-E seed.com. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. Kansas Weed Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Thanks for staying with us this morning. We're at uh, Manhattan, Kansas at the Kansas Farm Bureau office. We're joined by Terry Holden, who's the CEO and general counsel for Kansas Farm Bureau. And uh, we're talking about um, a trip you took uh, earlier this summer and dealing with issues that face rural Kansas, especially when it comes to agriculture. And first segment, we talked about labor shortage. And this ties right in with labor shortage, which is a large animal veterinarian shortage. Yep. Um, I know K-State puts out some of the best vets in the world. Um, it, it seems that we wouldn't have a shortage here in the state of Kansas, but most of these people go back home. Yep. And that's one of the things we talked about on the tour. You know, we, we routinely and historically have, have had that shortage. We've done some things at the state level. There's a program you can get tuition repaid mm -hmm. uh, over time. The state runs. It runs about five or six students a year, which is a good number, but probably not enough. So we may need to look at expanding that. Um, the other thing we were able to talk about with the vet school is, is changing, and they've already begun reviewing the process of their admissions programs. How do we get you know, to a system where some percentage, 50% or better, of the students at the vet school actually come from Kansas. Mm -hmm. So we make sure that we're recruiting local talent, mm -hmm. hopefully those stay local. And then um, the other thing is on that is, you know, sort of how do we make sure that the industry in terms of agriculture is doing a better job of recruiting those students. So we don't historically interact real frequently, but maybe we need to step that up, um, create internship opportunities, um, do other things to introduce those folks to the opportunities in rural Kansas so that we can retain them when they're done with school. Well, I, I've spent lots of times at the uh, veterinarian school, and um, one of the things you always hear from vet students is, I can deal with a parakeet or a snake or a turtle and make the same amount of money as preg checking a, a herd of cattle. So, yeah. I mean, uh, the work environment is very difficult. So, uh, let's jump over to water. I know the governor has a 50-year water plan uh, for the state, which he put in place about three years ago. Tracy Street does a great job over at that department. Um, it's vital that we have a, a basically a supply of water for yeah, crops, dairy, and everything else that goes on. Yeah, so one of the things we're able to do is just highlight some of the work that Tracy and the Water Office folks have done in terms of technology. Mm -hmm. um, spend a little bit of time on a couple of technology farms looking at the improvements in irrigation delivery, mm -hmm. um, some of the, the you know moisture probes and other things that, that we've been able to use um, that there's money available for that folks can, uh, can acquire through the EQIP program or in other ways uh, to better manage the water resource. So hopefully those things, in some of those instances we've already seen, um, benefits from the implementation of that technology. Um, if you go to the Sheridan 6 Lima, one of the programs that came out of that vision, um, they're seeing great, great results in terms of sustainable use and sustainable water levels in the aquifer. So just expanding what those do, interest is growing. It takes time to get folks educated and, and ready to jump in on those, and hopefully we're making really good progress in that. It's important. Do people in rural Kansas sometimes feel like they're less forgotten when we're talking about Topeka, Wichita, and parts of Kansas City, or or do they feel like they've got their, their voices heard and, and they just quietly go about doing what they do on a daily basis? Um, you know, I think a lot of rural Kansans like living in rural Kansas mm -hmm. because of the freedom and the ability to do what they love to do that it gives them is certainly true of, of our members, farmers and ranchers across the state. Um, I think they, most of them generally know how to make their voice heard. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, we as organizations need more help in helping having folks step up and do that right. um, engagement activity. But overall, if you look at the work of the legislature, um, what the governor has been supportive of, even at the congressional level, a lot of times rural Kansas has a bigger voice than we think we do. Right. And a lot of those actions that, that government takes anyway are directly connected to the wishes and, and what rural Kansas needs to succeed. So we've got to continue to tell that story, Right. Um, but we can do it successfully when we do. When well, we do. not only that, when you look at that trade being a major issue, yep. talking on the federal level and state level as well, uh, inter -tra transportation being a major issue here in the state of Kansas, roads, highways, county roads. I mean, everything plays a huge role in getting food, fiber, and fuels into market. Yeah, and you've got to just continually be engaged and active and making mm -hmm. sure that those concerns are, are you know, vocalized and that folks are aware 
of what what it's going to take because um, there are disconnects between you mentioned you know some of the more urban parts of the state those are there but we can bridge those gaps right. if we're if we're active and, right. and aggressive about I mean that's the that's the whole thing about Farm Bureau is a voice of agriculture I mean yeah. you hear you hear it all the time you are the voice of agriculture Terry thanks for your time yeah. it was very nice to meet The Kansas Soybean Commission and American Soybean Association are reminding farmers to take special care to keep treated seeds from entering the U.S. grain and oil seed supply. Treated seeds and commodity shipments are a problem for multiple commodities that warrants the entire supply chain's attention and directly jeopardizes U.S. markets both foreign and domestic. Maintaining our nation's cellular reputation for appropriately managing all pesticides is one key element of providing consumer satisfaction and maintaining acceptance of our exports. Few concerns can be as damaging to our status as supplier safe, high quality agricultural products, such as the presence of seed compounds in commodities intended for food and feed use. Farmers with questions can review the Guide to Seed Treatment Stewardship, an industry-wide initiative to promote the safe handling and management of treated seed. Endorsed by ASA and other ag groups, the guide provides farmers and seed companies with critical information and up-to-date guidelines for managing treated seed effectively to minimize further risk of exposure to non-target organisms. For more information, visit seed-treatment-guide.com on the web. With wheat harvest in full swing, it's a good time to focus again on marketing this year's crop. Fundamentals are mixed. World ending stocks for 2017-18 are forecast to increase by nearly 2%, but U.S. ending stocks are estimated to decrease by 237 million bushels. In Kansas, the NAS June wheat estimate pegged the crop at 304 million bushels, down 164 from last year, but the 600,000 acres of abandonment due to freezes, snowstorms, and crop disease will impact many farmers' bottom lines. Since bottoming in mid-May, both cash and futures prices have increased nearly 50 cents a bushel. Wheat basis, the difference between cash and futures, has improved since last year and is roughly equal to year-ago levels, but still weaker than average. Last year after harvest, basis in Kansas weakened roughly a dollar more per bushel than average, making it difficult for many to even break even with their cost of production. Today things are a little better. The crop isn't as big. Grain handlers did a great job of storing, blending, and moving old crop wheat out, and the Chicago Board is implementing a variable storage rate beginning with the 2018 March futures contract that should help return basis levels to something closer to average by next spring. For wheat already in the elevator, near-term weather concerns may provide some price strength as spring wheat areas continue to be impacted by heat and drought, but increasing world ending stocks will likely weigh on the market and limit storage profits. If you have quality wheat, better than average protein, and can store on the farm, the odds of obtaining a solid return via a storage hedge and improving basis are pretty good, but you may have to hang on until February. If you would like to advertise your business on Kansas Ag Report, give us a call, 785-580-3287. This segment brought to you by Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farmers and ranchers since 1919. KFB.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil-specific seed. Find them on the web at oldieseed.com. That's O-H-L-D-E seed.com. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. Kansas Weed Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com. I will take action against herbicide resistant weeds. I will know my weeds and I will stop them before they go to seed. I will do whatever it takes to give my crops the upper hand. And I will use multiple herbicide sites of action because every action counts. I will take action, this time, for all time. You need a partner that you can count on to be there for your business. Providing a depth of understanding to risk management issues 
so you don't have to. A knowledgeable support team located in your area, delivering products and services to make you more successful. The producer-funded Kansas Wheat Innovation Center was built to get improved varieties into the hands of farmers faster. Kansas Wheat, farmers advancing their future through wheat genetics research. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. This Medford, New Jersey school bus runs on biodiesel, and so do these. In fact, all of these buses run on clean-burning biodiesel, which is great because the more we use biodiesel in our heavy-duty vehicles, the less carbon pollution in our air. Think how great it would be if more of our school buses ran on biodiesel. More biodiesel, less carbon pollution. More is less. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Imagine having someone help you pick the best corn hybrids for every field on your farm. Your oldie representative can combine your data with his data to offer a field-by-field -field prescription. Contact Oldie Seed today at 877-692-4555. The producer-funded Kansas Wheat Innovation Center was built to get improved varieties into the hands of farmers faster. Kansas Wheat, farmers advancing their future through wheat genetics research. A heifer fed at Sunbelt Feed Yard of Hugoton by Cimarron was named the Earl C. Brookover Memorial Award winner at the Beef Empire Days Fed Cattle Show in early June in Garden City. The heifer placed 10th in the live show and 1st in the heifer carcass contest to post the best combined finish of the 97 steers and 40 heifers. She weighed 1,270 pounds live, graded middle choice, and was a yield grade 2.79. In addition to winning the Brookover Award, the heifer also won the Zoetis MGA Champion Heifer Carcass Award. Deerfield feeders fed and owned the Grand Champion Steer, which placed 4th live and 12th in the Steer Carcass Contest. This entry weighed 1,502 pounds live, graded middle choice, and was a yield grade 2.73. Gardner Angus Ranch of Ashland fed the steer that won the Cargill Meat Solutions Grand Champion Carcass Award. Fed at Triangle H Grain and Cattle of Garden City, the 1,398-pound steer graded low prime and was a yield grade 2.96. The reserve champion steer carcass belonged to an entry fed by Myron Danner at Danner Feeders of Muscatine, Iowa. Danner's 1,350-pound steer graded middle prime and was a yield grade 2.67. Heritage Feeders of Sublette owned and fed the entry that produced the reserve champion heifer carcass, the 1,420-pound heifer graded middle choice, and was a yield grade 2.92. Good morning, everyone. I'm Eric Osterhaus with Paragon Ag Advisors. We've got a lot of exciting headlines in the grain markets as we're now solidly in the wheat harvest. We have our June 30th Planted Acres report coming up, and for our corn growers, the all-important weather leading into pollination. These factors appear to have finally convinced the funds to pull back from their near record net short positions in the grains and this was especially apparent in the wheat market as futures have rallied up close to 50 cents in the last several weeks. The soybeans and corn rallied briefly but both have paused for the moment. However, really the most impressing question of the day lies with our wheat producers that are currently harvesting. Do we sell or do we hold? The last couple of years have punished those who chose to hold and wait for better prices. Not only did prices drop significantly, but for those in commercial storage, the additional cost of storage and interest added insult to injury. Will the rally last? Will everyone sell and cap us off in the short run? Will the funds decide to jump back in on the short side and drive us right back down to the lows? These are all valid concerns. Even with the rally, current prices do not seem all that exciting, but perhaps finding a strategy that allows you to reward this rally and still provide you some upside may be prudent. There are some good strategies out there that you can use to do just that. 
If you have any questions on markets, we'd like to help. Call Paragon today at 888-452-8751. Have a productive day. Closed captioning brought to you by the Soybean Checkoff. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. KansasSoybeans.org. Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farmers and ranchers since 1919. KFB.org. Kansas Weed Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Kansas Livestock Association, supporting our members' business interests to meet consumers' demands. KLA.org. Well, that's our show for today. I hope you'll join us each week for more news and information about agriculture in the state of Kansas. I'm Brian Holman, and thanks for watching. I will take action against herbicide-resistant weeds. I will know my weeds, and I will stop them before they go to seed. I will do whatever it takes to give my crops the upper hand, and I will use multiple herbicide sites of action because every action counts. I will take action, this time for all time. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. The producer-funded Kansas Wheat Innovation Center was built to get improved varieties into the hands of farmers faster. Kansas Wheat, farmers advancing their future through wheat genetics research.